Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, you may be sitting at home, cuddling into a blanket, feeling nice and warm, but the situation in this time of the year is perhaps different for many others, feeling cold, out there, no warmth, no food. Today, we're talking about winter. With me in studio today, I have Hafiz Imran Chunara from Africa a Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International. He's the national coordinator. Welcome to the show, Hafiz Imran. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah abdul rahman and once again thanks for having me on the show. Jazakumullah khairan. It's always a pleasure to, to speak to people who are at the face of service and helping uh, many of our fellow humans throughout the span of uh, the, the continent of Africa. Can you share with us who and what is Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International? Well, uh, Dr. Rahman, actually, as most viewers would probably know, but just for the benefit of the viewers who are not aware, Africa Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International, I'll come back to that in a second, uh, started about almost 30 years ago, right? But the brief history, uh, you know, in South Africa, we started in 1987. So it's about 26 years old right now, alhamdulillah. We have offices in about 29 countries in Africa, about 4,000 full-time staff members, about 160 different schools, three universities, many clinics and health centers. Uh, but that's all over Africa, including South Africa. Um, and of course, we did, our head office for South Africa is here up in Johannesburg. So uh, that's just a brief overview of African Muslims Agency. We do many projects. I know we, today we're specifically focusing on winter, but we do many projects. We build water wells uh, for villages all over Africa. We, dig, we drill boreholes. We build uh, masajid. We build centers, classrooms. We do educational facilities. Uh, we build homes for the destitute. We have orphanages. We have a center here in the south of Joburg, for example. But those are a broad perspective of African Muslims Agency, Direct Aid International. Uh, but yeah, today, of course, winter is one of our projects. We do Ramadan projects, Qurbani projects. But winter, of course, this time of the year is very important to us. What, what would a winter project entail? What is it that African Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International do for winter? You know... It's, it's interesting, Abdul Rahman, when we talk about winter, and let me just share with you for a couple of, couple of seconds here. I've got a couple of things I want to kind of go through with you regarding winter. The way we approach winter and have done for many, many years, basically since inception, since 1987, we've every single year had winter programs. Now, winter in South Africa, as we know, gets very, very cold, gets bitterly cold. In some parts of the country, it rains and gets cold. In some parts of the country, it's rain, wind and cold. Some parts, we get a bit of snow as well sometimes. So in South Africa, we're no stranger to winter. And, and let me share with you a couple of stories maybe and why winter to me is really close to my heart. I'll be really quite honest and open and frank with you uh, today. It's really close to, from when, when it comes to winter, I reflect on this every single year. This morning, actually, I was driving and I saw a little boy, maybe five, six years old, maybe four years old, I'm not sure, walking in the bitter cold uh, at about 7.15, 7.30 this morning. And uh, really, really cold and walking with his kind of backpack going to school or whatever the case is. Now, I try to picture what his parents or whoever his guardians were this morning. What did they do when he left home? They looked at this young little boy and said, OK, see you this afternoon or see you this evening, whatever the case is, depending on the situation. And he's walking through an open field, an open field. Now, he's going to cross a highway where there's cars or he's either going to. I mean, he's, he's exposed to so much. Now, let me share with you a personal experience. When I was a teenager, I mean, you know, it's interesting when we're teenagers, we think we know everything. And when I was a teenager, I was no different. I think I knew everything. So, of course, I decided one day, I don't know why, in the middle of winter, that I did not like my father's rules at home. So I decided to leave home. And I decided to walk. So I walked from Lanasia to Joburg. And it took me about an hour and a half or so. You can imagine, I was a teenager, and I, it was middle of winter, freezing. And, of course, I never thought further than my nose, and I never thought, where would I sleep that night? So interestingly enough, I spent the night under a bridge here in Gauteng, in Johannesburg, in the middle of the city center, actually. Under one of the bridges, that's where I spent that night, next to another street kid. Every 15 minutes, I woke up because you're sleeping on concrete. You're sleeping on the floor. I froze that night. I mean, it was unbelievable. Now, you can imagine these kids do this every single night. And every 10, 15 minutes, I got up. And, and, and I couldn't, I just couldn't conceptualize how people could do that. And superimpose on that, as you've mentioned, that sometimes there's wind and other times there's Absolutely. water as well. And then just think about it for a second. Have you thought about rodents and stuff? And I was under the bridge. 
And the next morning, I kind of went to my dad's office and, uh, and he looked at me and he said, you're welcome to come back home, but the rules don't change. Or you're welcome to stay out, if that so be your choice. And of course, I thought about my warm bed and I thought I'm going home no matter what the rules are. And that sticks with me every single year when winter comes. So what our program entails is, we, you know, I don't, we, we, we put together hampers, we put together uh, packs of blankets and, and gloves and scarves and, 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 and woolen caps as well and a few, few food items like soup and tea and that kind of thing as well. We put together in hampers as you can see here. But one thing that strikes me is I can't stand it when if giving someone something that's of low quality. What I mean by low quality I'm talking about, I, I, I often see sometimes we do this little gray blanket type thing, felt type thing. And I, I honestly, my personal opinion, I feel it's very bad for people's health uh, to, to be able to sleep in something like that. So I don't, we don't believe in doing that. So for, with, with that at International African Muslim Age, we've always had this thing that we'd rather spend a little bit more, but get something good quality. A good quality blanket, like in this pack, for example, is 280 rand to a donor. We have a double blanket in there. We have two woolen scarves. We have two woolen hats. We have two sets of gloves. We have some soup. We have some, some tea bags, that kind of thing as well. We have a single blanket, a three-quarter blanket as well that is more a single pack type thing. That's about 85 rand. So we do that. But now think about this for a second, Abdul Rahman. Winter affects everybody around the country. Muslim, non-Muslim, doesn't matter. Sure. Young, old, elderly, sick, doesn't matter. It affects everyone. Yes. Now... What we decided to do was that we cannot do everything ourselves. It's just not possible. We don't have the reach every single rural area. No one organization can do everything. So honestly, what we've done is we've decided to partner. We create partnerships with other organizations and network with other organizations. Excellent. I, I think what's substantial is that you mention, and there's an acknowledgement to say, um, we can't do everything ourselves. Absolutely. Uh, you know, acknowledging that this is what we can do, but we need to to strike up these partnerships with other people. Um, I'd like to further engage on these partnerships, but right now we're going to go for a break. When we come back, we'll be speaking about these partnerships. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Africa, we are the children of Africa. If you've just joined us, we've been speaking about winter, and we have with us in studio Hafiz Imran Chunara, the National Director of Africa Muslims Agency and Direct Aid International. Hafiz Imran, just prior to the break, we were speaking about partnerships, and that's something that really got my attention. You mentioned partnerships and working with, with other organizations in the different areas where Africa Muslims Agency serves. Could you elaborate on some of these partnerships? Absolutely, Abdul Rahman. I mean, you know, as we said earlier as well, is that you know, winter doesn't affect only one group of people. Uh, so when we think about winter from African Muslims Agency perspective, we think about the vast number of people around the country. Now, we obviously are not the only organization in the country that services uh, the need uh, of the needy uh, when it comes to winter. We're not the, we don't have to be the biggest. We're not the only one. I don't believe anybody can be the biggest or the only one or the main one. I think it's important to understand that every organization, every person that does, if somebody gives out five blankets to some family, they've made a massive difference to that family. And we have to understand that. So what we've decided to do many, many years ago is that partnering with other organizations, other groups, uh, maybe local counselors, uh, maybe local orphanages, maybe a local hospital, uh, or whatever the, the case may be, extends our reach. Also what it allows us to do for our donors, because remember donors and, and people, and rightly so, are very concerned about whether you are spending money on duplicating work. And that's important to understand. We don't want to spend money duplicating something. If you're doing something in an area, why go and do the same thing next door to you when I can enhance what you are doing already by providing you with some extra, uh, some extra help? So and moving I, from competition to collaboration. Absolutely, 100%. You know, we, don't, we shouldn't be competing with one another. We should be completing one another. And that's really where we look, where we look at it from. That's where this partnership ca idea came in uh, a number of years ago uh, when my late dad was, was the director of Africa Muslim Agency, Direct Aid International. Also, we realize that we can't only partner with Muslim organizations. Winter is not a Muslim thing. We don't have a monopoly on it. It is a general thing. It's a general population thing. I mean, I remember a few years ago in Cape Town, actually, I, uh, I visited a bit of uh, some friends um, who stayed in an area where lots of horse breeding was happening and that kind of thing. And uh, I happened to, you know, they made me aware of somewhere where I could go and I could witness a family that slept in a stable, in a horse stable. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about this, you can't come to the person and say, are you Muslim? Then I'll get, I'll get help for you. But if you're not, it doesn't work that way. No, it, doesn't. it does not. That's not the human thing to do. 
So we, we try to, we, I mean, at the moment, we currently partner with about 85 different organizations, uh, big, small, different areas, some small little organizations, some local counselors, some schools, some orphanages, some physically challenged children, some primary schools, some local hospitals and as well. And that's just in South Africa or is that throughout Africa? Well, that's, that's th- well, the 85 organizations is just in South Africa. Wow. That's just in South Africa. That's beside what we do in the rest of Africa, of course. Winter affects all, all over the place. But just in South Africa, 85 different organizations and different groups. So this must be quite a mammoth task to manage operationally. Yes. How do you ensure a measure effectiveness? And um, how do you see that the people who actually you know, are the rightful recipients are the ones who are then privy to the aid and the relief that you provide? Well, good question. Now, before we come to the effectiveness of it, let me just share with you a quick, uh, quick uh, brief overview of how we actually did this, uh, because we actually have to get this thing out. What we do is we put these packs together. We put these hampers together. We put the, 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 the blankets together in these packs. Then we send it by truck all over the country. We have an office in Durban, office in Cape Town, office in Lanasia. We have a little center called al Furqan Islamic Center in the south of Joburg. And we send it to our different centers, including our, our office in Johannesburg. Then what we do is those officers contact the other organizations in their areas or the needy uh, institutions in their areas. Then we have a day, like we had one now on the 18th of May, where we have it around the country in Cape Town at the Cape Town office at al Furqan Islamic Center in the south of Joburg. Uh, we have it in Durban over the last few days as well, where we have all these packs there and we have all these organizations that come and they come along with their vehicles. We have a small little program for them. We have a group of physically challenged children that came, for example, in wheelchairs as well to our Ulfurkan Islamic Center on the 18th of May. Uh, we have a local counselor that came there as well uh, to receive for their area packs and hampers. So thousands of these go out around the country to our various offices. We do a small little program for them. We have the media there. We interview some of them to find out what they're doing on the ground as well, to know what they're physically doing as well, because they know the recipients. They know the actual families. Sure. They have people on the ground. And then we hand it to them. But coming back to your question, which I'll cover just now as well, is actually how we get, because that's an important part, how do we get feedback? How do we know it's being effective? But I think it's important for the viewers to first understand how the process works. So once we get it out to them, once these recipient organizations take ownership of these packs, now they have to go out because remember, when you and I feel cold, when we wake up in the morning and we're freezing, when you put our toe out of, the, out of bed, out of, under the blanket, that day, a person who doesn't have a blanket also feels cold. The guy under the bridge. The guy under the bridge is also feeling cold that day. Sure. Now you decide that day to give money to benefit a poor person, which is noble and it's, it, 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 it's, it's respectable and alhamdulillah, that's good. But how long does it take for that blanket to get to him still? So we have to think before winter. Sure. We have to get to these organizations before winter hits the bitter cold. So that they are prepared when the heat hits to be able to pass it on to other people. That's kind of how we partner and get it out onto the field. I hope you're still keeping very warm. We're going for a break once again. We'll be back shortly. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Africa, we are the children of Africa. Welcome back. We've been discussing Winter and Africa Muslims Agency Direct Aid International. Hafiz Imran, just prior to the break, you were mentioning that you reach out to thousands of families. You mentioned different regions. If you could highlight for us you know, specific regions or communities, as well as more or less an idea of how many families you reach out to in winter. I think that's important to know as well. You know, when we say regions, we talk about, of course, in South Africa, about KZN, Western Cape, Gauteng, that kind of But let me give you a little bit more specific, you know, and these are just a few. I mean, you can imagine with 85 different organizations and different groups and schools and that, it's, uh, it's vast. It's a long list. It's a long list. But just in the south of Joburg. The south of Joburg, we know, is an often kind of neglected area out in Orange Farm, Lehigh, those kind of areas. So we, we're very involved in that area as well. Also because al Furqan Islamic Center is based out in that area as well. That's a center that's, uh, that's owned by African Muslim Agency, Dar International. Uh, and so that's kind of like a beacon of light there. People see it as that. Uh, and so it, it's our responsibility to benefit that community. That's important. Of course, Soweto, uh, some of the informal settlements around, around the Zach Park as well. People would know that. Uh, Fine Town, Puerki, Valcom, Fixburg, all the way to Lesotho, for example. You're looking at KZN. Now, KZN, you've got Verulam, you've got Chats, Chatsworth, you've got Phoenix, you've got um, Clarewood. Now, interestingly enough, we're speaking to the, to the KZN office just the other day, where they were talking about, from Ladysmith, they went 70 kilometers into the mountainous area. Now, there it gets cold. I mean, there it really gets cold. And 70 kilometers into a mountainous area to be able to benefit people there. 
And Abdurrahman, you and I sitting here ch- chatting about this. But understand, for, let, let's think for a second. When you think about, because it always fascinates me when we think about, sometimes we can sit with our luxury, with our comfort, and let's not deny we have that, alhamdulillah. That's a good thing. Allah blessed us with that. But when he blessed us with that, is he not testing us when he shows us a young boy walking to school in the morning through an open field, maybe five or six years old? When he shows us somebody sleeping in a horse stable? When he shows us somebody sleeping under a bridge? When he puts me through that experience or allows me to experience that experience, was it not because there's a greater test in mind for me now that you're aware of it? See, when you're not aware of it, you can say, I didn't know. didn't know. But when we're aware of it, it doesn't mean we must apologize for the blessings we have. That's good, alhamdulillah. Enjoy it and clothe your family. But think about those other people. So when you think about it, I mean now, 70 kilometers in the mountainous area, next time you see a small child, next time you see someone, try to think, do they have what I have? Do they have a blanket? I know when I get into my bed at night, even with my blanket, sometimes I'm still cold. Yes. What about someone who doesn't have anything? Now you look at Western Cape, you've got Philippi, Manenberg. Those areas, some of those areas in Western Cape are not only uh, cold, not only raining, not only wind. they drug infested. They're gang infested. Sure. They have major issues they deal with there. On top of that, the cold and the winter. Port Elizabeth, I didn't mention that as well. We send to Port Elizabeth. We've got a representative in Port Elizabeth that will distribute in Port Elizabeth, for example. There we do through Helen Vale as well. We've got Worcester, Blickisdorp. So those are just some areas. To come back to your question about specifics of some numbers, for example, roughly about 8,000 families would benefit just from the one we did now on the 18th of May. Just from that launch on the 18th of May, 8, about 8,000 roughly 8, approximately families, inshallah, will benefit from that just from that 18th of May. And it continues because remember, that's not the only need. The need is still there. Yes. It's still, it, will, it will remain there until the end of winter, of course. Um, Brother Imran, we also touched on very briefly, and I'd like to delve a bit deeper into that, the whole idea of monitoring effectiveness. You know, does this reach the primary mm. recipients who it's intended for? You know, and, and that's the, probably the most important part. Because honestly, we can talk about uh, the hampers we put together. We can talk about the quality of the blankets. We can talk about some food items. We can talk about the need on the ground. We can talk about having the resources or the donors to be able to fund all of this because that's really where it comes from. The donors fund it through our offices. Uh, But if there's no accountability, if there's no feedback, if there's no way to monitor it, then really it begs that question, Mark, is how do you know you're actually doing a good job? How do you know you're making a difference to the person on the ground? Because that's ultimately why you're doing it. Why else would it be done? Now, what we do there is we, 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 we strict with the organizations we partner. First of all, we research those organizations to make sure that the work they're doing, the work they say they're doing is actually being done. That's the first thing. Secondly, we also accompany some of those organizations on their handouts. So we don't just say, here's it. Okay, now it's your story to go and do what you do. No, sometimes we accompany some of those organizations on the actual handing out of it. Then with some of the organizations, uh, they, they, they're more strict on, for example, they get signatures. When they hand out a pack to a family or to a person, they'll get a signature with an ID number. I know there's one particular organization in Cape Town that does that very, very effectively, for example. So they make sure. Then with all the organizations and all the orphanages and the frail care places we, we, we hand out to as well, because frail care, that's another important part, the elderly. We often forget about the elderly and the sick. Uh, some of the local hospitals. So we request footage, we request photographs of the actual packs being handed out to the recipients. Then also what we say to these, these organizations, and all the, we're very strict with that, because one thing we, we, we're very uh, um, strong on in Africa Muslims Agency is, is openness and transparency and accountability. So we're very strict. We say to these organizations, all the recipients, that if we don't get feedback that we are satisfied with it, we can provide to our donors, we will not partner with them again. So there's a constant re-evaluation. It's an amount. Of it's a trust. Undoubtedly. It's a trust. Somebody gives their donation to, to, with, with, the, with, the, with the belief in mind that they are benefiting a poor family. And if it doesn't get to that, that's a, it's a trust. It's an amount. So we're very strict that if an organization does not give us the feedback or a group of people do not give us the feedback that we require, we don't partner with them again. Excellent. And we're very strict about that. Because there's so many needy people, we don't want this to go to waste. Sure, undoubtedly. And you know, when I want to come back to that point where we talk about Muslims and non-Muslim organizations. In Cape Town, for example, I had a story which I think is worth mentioning now. Uh, some of the feedback, come back to the feedback thing. On the 18th of May, we handed out, and I invited a group called the Gospel Pilot from Kailicha, one of the townships. Uh, and, and, and talking about this, I'm sure some of the Muslim viewers will be wondering, well, how do we do this? Remember, zakah money is zakah money, and that has to go to Muslims. Sure. So we don't only use the car money. We use the car money that goes to Muslims only. I need to be clear on that. But there's lots of other donations that we have 
that come in generally for the general public, the lilla, those kind of things as well that we use more for the non-Muslim recipients, which is, which is allowed, of course. So I know to clear that point. But importantly enough, which I think really warmed my heart, was we had this, this organization that came, Gospel Pilot from Kailicha, just to give you one example of feedback. And they were there on Saturday. I was there on the 18th of May when we were there, and we were handing out to these people. And, of course, this pastor came up to me and he said, look, this is not normal. He said, you're a Muslim organization. Why are you giving to us? And I said, well, are you, do you have people in your community, in your church that feel cold? And he said, yes. I said, well, you're a human being. I'm a human being. Mm. I mean, and so th he took those back. That was a Saturday. The next morning, obviously, they had a church service. He came back to my office on the Monday morning and he said, firstly, the people, the recipients asked him, because they see our stickers on, our labels on the hampers. They asked him, well, wait a second, this organization is Muslim people. And he said, yes. And he said, well, why did they give us? You see, now, this hurts me because why should there be a mentality in the community that, why they gave us? Muslims only care for Muslims. Why, why, should Mus why are Muslims caring for us? How come that exists? Mm. That hurts me. So I think our job is bigger, is to be able to show that it's a human thing. And as Muslims, it's our responsibility to do yes. that, to be able to care for people. The frail. I mean, often we think when you go to some of the frail care places, these old people that are, they can't take care of themselves, the elderly, they in bed the whole day. Often they're cold. Sure. You know, they, 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 they're close to, you know, they, they, they're in old advanced age. They, age. They, they, advanced mm. age. We don't know what the illnesses are. They don't know who cares about them. They wonder. You've got physically challenged children. So I think there's so much to this. Undoubtedly, in many of these situations, the fact that they have these challenges, whether it's the frail care or those who have special needs, you know, not being warm in winter actually compounds of course. their challenges. Of course. Um, of course. Hafiz Imran, you've mentioned at length, um, you know, about the, the outreach to various areas, various communities. And we also touched on the aspect of Allah putting you through some of these experiences and making you privy to some of these situations and how that has impacted and been a catalyst for you to really, you know, take a hands-on appro approach in terms of the winter program. Mm. Now, for us who have come to know about this, uh, inshallah, Allah makes it such that there's also a call to action in our hearts. Yes. Um, and how is it that, that people could get involved? Rahman, you know, uh, it's, uh, I think the, the donors of South Africa uh, are very big-hearted, alhamdulillah, and may Allah bless them and Amen. continue to bless them with abundance. And we want to thank them because without that, we can't do what we do. And I often talk to our staff that we, we, we all just one team. We are all tools in the process. We are not doing those, the, the needy people, as a favor. They are doing us a favor by allowing us to serve them. And Allah is doing us a favor by allowing us to benefit in this, in this. So if you're sitting at home, if the viewers are sitting and they want to give, you are not doing that poor person a favor. You, they are doing you a favor to get benefit. To They're get giving blessing. you an opportunity. They're giving you an, opportunity, an amazing opportunity. Where your 280 rand invested somewhere else in a money market or whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, it could bring you some returns. But imagine the returns it can bring you here. Perpetual, imagine. Perpetual, in perpetuity. I mean, when you think about it. So the opportunity uh, cost is amazing. For 280 rand or 85 rand for a single blanket, whatever the case is. So you can, they can contact any of our offices. The, 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 the details are on the screen, of course. The contact numbers, the account details are on the screen. The website details are on the screen. They're welcome to contact any of our offices in KZN or Western Cape or Joburg, where the head office is, or in Indonesia, we have an office there, or the Al-Furqan Islamic Center, which is in the south of Joburg, near Grasmere, for example. Uh, and they can you know, or call the, the, the main line. The, the, the main 24-hour cell phone number being 0832519376 is also on the screen. But, um, you know, they can contact. And we urge them to do that. Please, don't only give when you're feeling cold. Give even before you're feeling cold. We know that now, as I'm sitting here with you, winter has started, yes. But you and I both know it's still coming. The real winter is still coming. In another month or so, it's going to be really cold. Really, really cold. And I urge the viewers, please, think about your akhirah. Think about your children. Think about the 280 rand, the 85 rand that you can donate. And you can give more than that or less than that. It's your choice. Give according to what you can. But participate in the opportunity to get reward in perpetuity. That's important. Imagine that person who covers themselves with a the uh, the blanket. Or a father who clothes his son or daughter or a mother. And imagine the dua they make. Imagine the power of the prayer they Thank give you. at that moment. And that may be your saving grace with oh, all yes. the mistakes we make in life. And that dua, that prayer may be the thing 
that saves us. And inshallah, I pray for that. And inshallah, may Allah bless our community and may bless them with abundance in every area Amen. of their life. Amen. Inshallah, shukran. Jazakumullah khairan Hafiz Imran for being a guest today, sharing with us this beautiful information and insight into winter and how winter is experienced by people less fortunate than us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant one and all of us the opportunity of truly empathizing, number one, and number two, calling ourselves to action to see how we can make winter more livable for those who are living sometimes in our immediate vicinity. Jazakum khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This center helps us a lot while there is no voting They help us from when we start with Kenya to ask help and they open their hands. They give us food to cook for uh, disabled people because I'm working for masses and any uh, community project from Fine Town right, to. So since when uh, we came there and then they start helping us about food, they give us food every month, milli meal, rice, everything, even the tin stuff and everything to cook for the for disabled people. So today I came here to say thanks to them, even to agriculture. They give us, they train us how to uh, do agriculture, they give us seeds and everything. So I'm coming here to say thanks to them. They mustn't, they must not that uh, do this to us only, but they must see even the other people who need us. From Mauritania to Ethiopia, from Tunisia to Somalia, we are the children of Africa. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah.